Hello, this is Spencer Colgan. Welcome back to my show on YouTube. I'm hanging a very nice Philip Jeffries product today on this wall. The wall had a very high quality uh, eggshell finish latex that is water-based paint on it. And so we treat the walls with Roman 999, okay? Now, there are other things you can use, such as Shields, S-H-I-E-L-D-Z, clear. You can use that. You can also use an acrylic primer. But this is good, um, you know, most of the time. If it were a skim coat where, I thought I was coming to this job, skim coating. My customer took a picture up close of the wall and it exaggerated the very, very tiny stipple the walls have due to the paint roller and it looked like texture. Anyway, if I had skim coated, which means I make the wall smooth with a plaster coat, then we want to seal that. And I suggest that you use, in that case, guards from Zinsser, G-A-R-D-Z. Okay? I know it gets confusing. Like, hey, what do I use with this? What do I use with that? Look, it's a competitive market for these uh, products. So... I just mentioned two, I'll mention one more, there's kills. If you have a problem wall, your product, your, your, your wall is repelling the, uh, the wallpaper because you used a water-based primer or some garbage and you have, you've activated the glue underneath, you didn't realize, use oil. Use oil, oil-based primer, kills. So there goes three, Roman 999 or Shields Clear. Then on a skim coat, you can use Guards, G-A-R-D-Z, or you can use uh, oil-based primer for problem walls, really problematic. Everything's torn um, and you've activated glue. You didn't realize glue was on the wall and you, you get what looks like rubbing your fingers in dirt. And uh, that's what happens. You've activated the glue and you need to lock that down. I would use oil, save yourself a lot of time. Okay, so we're gonna get this wall dry. Yes, we're gonna let it dry first and then we're gonna hang our product. Once you get the wall covering over the window, you extend your blade. You're not cutting the trim, you're just cutting against it. And you're cutting this off. And you're stopping right there. Now, the only thing we're gonna use this blade for right now is just this, just getting it. To the next profile which is this okay see that i'm good now the rest, you want to get this in well you got to do it by scissors <clears throat> if you do it with the razor you'll be cutting up against the person's trim so let me move you in closer so We're not concerned about the in, that's an in. We're concerned with the out. See how it comes out? Because we can always trim off more, we can never add. So, here's my fat part, right here. You agree that that's in, this is out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna feel my wallpaper right there. That's the fat part. I'm just going to trim the wall covering 
right to my finger so I don't go beyond that point at which I need wallpaper. Okay, same thing here. The next out is this one, right down here. So we're going to trim the wallpaper right to that out. It's actually called a stress point, but you folks who don't hang paper, you don't know that, right? Okay, so we're good there. I can trim that easily now. I'll bring you in closer when I'm done. Now this point, I have to bring my wallpaper all the way in. And the, the reason for trimming it is so that I know that I've covered the, the ends. Going the wrong way here. It's a little tricky. You gotta know where your wallpaper's gonna fall. That's good. Okay, where's my next obstacle? My next obstacle is too far down to show you right now. So, let's bring you in close. I trimmed my wall covering against this fence here. And I stopped right here. Precision. Precision. Came down to here. And now I want my wallpaper in there. See that? So I'm going to have to trim this. But since we can't get this thick vinyl all the way around this, at the same time, we have to trim it and release the stress where wall covering meets our trim. So then this was the fattest point going out. Before we start going in here, we have this fat point that's out. That's my furthest out. So you see my cut point goes right there. Now I've relieved the stress that this wool covering had on it that was preventing this area from going in here. But this cut released the stress and allowed me to bring my wallpaper in here. So then I trimmed it again at the next stress point. So I put my finger here and I said, well, I can't go beyond this point. And so I just trimmed up until my blade hit the wall. And now you see that I can bring my wall covering into here. And that's why you see the cut here. So that my wallpaper goes in there. See that? All right, so let me trim that. my blade because when you start cutting your blade might go like this watch this and you cut the whole thing so the rocket so she doesn't come out of place okay now I'm just it's like sculpting a little bit We just don't want to cut too much off. And here's the part where you can really mess it up. Okay? A professional knows when he or she has to go super slow. You rush this, and everybody knows. All you gotta do is look in in the intricate areas. And here's what else you might want to do. Look, cut the wall covering. So to relieve more stress, let's bring this right into our wall. Alright. Now, let me get this, let me get these rabbit ears out of your way.
just going to trim this back because we don't need it. We don't need this in the way. Now you get the better idea. So take my finger, push it in there. You're actually relaxing the vinyl too, you know? So she goes in there better. Okay. Sing it. What I do is I make I make dotted lines now. You know what I mean by that? I'm perforating it because I want my wallpaper to go into that area perfectly. And so I'm making dotted lines. See that? Now when you pull it back, you should see a perforated line which is exactly what we have there. And what you can do, now that you have a perforation mark, you just can trim it right now. You may not be able to see that it's perforated, but I can. See that? Get rid of it. Now look at how beautifully that goes in. See that? It looks gorgeous. Take a Okay. Okay. Oh, I have a funny story for you. So, you know how people are. People get jealous, right? So I had a guy working for me in 2018. I think you're gonna love this one. So he winds up getting to my customer. He's a very good wallpaper installer, but he was very jealous of my success. Very jealous. Let me bring you in, show you the progress. Oh, sorry. See that? So he tells the customer behind my back, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Oh man, I, I'm sorry about this. He tells the customer, this guy don't know what he's doing. The woman says, really? So this guy went to the wallpaper school. He went to the wallpaper school. Now, you guys know that I graduated from, I have a PhD in wallpaper hanging, right? I, I think I've shared this with you. <clears throat> I have a PhD, a paper hanging diploma, that I got from Colgan University. Okay, my teacher was brilliant, and um, I do everything he taught me how to do. But this guy went to a different school. He paid for the school. Now check this out. He tells the woman, I don't know what I'm doing. So, long story short, he gets into her head that she's not getting the best job. So it caused friction. And I had to navigate around this tension. Well, lo and behold, that was 2018. I was just at the home of a prominent Floridian who's building a multi, a $100 million complex in which I've hung all of the wallpaper. Uh, not all of it in the complex, but all of the Valhalla that's in the house. I, you know, I, I don't want to violate privacy, but 
it's on my website. I hung it all. So anyway, they called me back for one of the other homes, for one of the other uh, mansions within the complex. And they said, the guy who did it, nice guy, but he messed it up. <laughs> yeah, you guessing right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, would you mind if I asked you who it was? So they said, now, let's just say his name was Kevin. Let's just say. Let's just call him Kevin. Uh, <clears throat> they said, Kevin hung the wallpaper. And I said, son of a gun, I know him. He was the guy who told people I didn't know what I was doing. So Kevin, I gotta fix your work. <laughs> but you know what I told him? Because I'm a good guy. I said, Kevin does better work than this. I said, just, just so you know, the woman, the designer said, yeah, you know, but I said, hey, he wasn't having a good day. Because I don't badmouth people. I don't, I don't have any need to, you know. That's a real, when you badmouth people, that's bad, that's bad. Actually, it's a spiritual problem, and it's called envy. It's not a good, it's not good. It's not good. So there you go. <laughs> Let me bring you in closer. Now we got to clean it up. Okay, how do you like it? You can see we have precision with regard to the geometric patterns. You don't want this blue thing getting skinnier and skinnier all the way down. You need to be conscious of your, your level, your plumb line, and then you, you see the, the dark blue there and then here, same amount. Same amount, okay? Now, before you move on to the next sheet, I mean, a lot of people ask me how I do it. Okay. Gotta clean it. Clean your wall covering down. You'll be very happy in the end. Be surprised how many fingerprints are on it. You know? Hey, what's this? Okay, bear with me, you're under my ladder. Oh, man. Here's the sheet we just hung. Now, I called Philip Jeffries and I said, what is the overlap? Is it one inch, two inches? She says, oh no, it's about a half an inch. <laughs> I said, can't be, no. I said, I said, you sure about that? She says, yeah. Show you something here, folks. You see this? I got news for all of you and Philip Jeffries. It's less than a half an inch. Now, I'm not complaining, but if you're an amateur, do not hang this. You'll ruin expensive wallpaper. The margin of for error is so slim. That is about a quarter of an inch at most of an overlap. I have never heard of it in my professional career. Never. Maybe you guys have. Great. I never did. The overlap is usually one inch and sometimes two inches. 
What does that mean to the new person? It means this vinyl, when you have vinyl that's so wide, the edges are very like, see how the edge is kind of like wavy. Well, in order to make this edge lay down properly, you double cut it. So as to make the edge very sharp and tight. You don't butt this stuff, look. You don't, you don't butt this kind of vinyl. The edge is never gonna lay down. It's too, it's been wrapped up, it's been in storage. It's never gonna lay down. So what you do is you overlap it, and then you find a point at which the material starts to become firm and stationary. And that's usually about an inch in from the edge. But here, uh-uh, it's only a quarter of an inch, folks. So that means I have to overlap it and cut it. That's all I got. That's the only room I have to play. Okay, so my advice to the new person hanging this is skip it, don't hang it. Okay, so I'm gonna do this double cut and we will show you how to do that. Now, with a geometric pattern like this, use the pattern to help you out. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll show you what I mean in a moment. If you're a manufacturer and you happen to watch my channel, can you stop making 54 inch goods, please? Please. Especially for residential use. We gotta match this up, but we have a window here. Take note at where things like this are in relation to your trim so that when you get to the next one, you have the same thing. This will help you make the decision, okay, my wallpaper's in the right place, okay? That's all, that's all I meant by that.
let's talk about your overlap. And that is this piece. If you run up and down it with this thing, you're going to make it shiny. So don't do that. You don't want to go up and down on the overlap. Use your hands like this. Because you'll make the point at which your overlap meets the underlap very shiny and it will be permanent. Now with the help of a laser level, we're going to make this cut. Wow, it's weird. In the middle, the pattern runs off a bit. I gotta fix that. So let me do it. Okay, that was easy. Let me bring it up close. Okay. Okay, it's tricky. I thought I screwed up here. Sometimes you do, you know? Okay, so we got a vertical, boom, boom. Very good. Okay, so this is our overlap. Now look. No room for error. I have to cut it in between here and here. I mean, come on. Come on, seriously. So, you have to match up your pattern by putting the overlap directly where all of this meets up. And then cut it straight right there in between here and here. Okay, that's the plan, let's do it. Let's bring you up close. See, that's my underlap. Okay.
Now, when you have a double cut pattern that goes around a window, again, a double cut that goes around the window and it's a connecting part. You have the bottom here, the footer, the side and the header. Don't cut anything yet. Okay. Trim it, yes, but don't cut. This is not easy. Especially when we're dealing with a quarter of an inch overlap. So, a couple of considerations. You see my laser? I have to make sure that this piece is consistent so I couldn't get it to land on the point. You see this? You see it again here? And you keep seeing it all throughout. I'm good with that. Then I pull it over so that I know that it matches over here. So this whole lower part is good. But folks, it doesn't mean it's good here or there. Far from done. Take note that I did not cut the piece over the window, the header. Take note. Oh, it's still there. You want to leave that so you can move it. It's not cut. See that? Okay. This is tricky. So... We want to leave a lot. We're just trimming this. And then we're going to cut it into place when we see that we match here. That we have the same reveal going on up here as we do with the rest. You know what the reveal is? That the same exact amount is showing at the edge as with the rest. Okay, folks. Look what's going on here. I come around my window, okay, we, we match up down here, okay, we matched up, we're all good here, okay, this is all good, we're ready to do our double cut here, but when we come around these darn windows, well, look what happens, I lose square on this vinyl material, what are we going to do? What are we going to do here? Look at this. Look. Look what happens. I meet up here, right? I'm all met up here. Look what happens. I'm going to trim some of this more. I'm going to trim here to take this pressure off of it. Cut the pressure off. Let's see if we can make this straighten out. Okay, do you like it? Took the pressure off here. We can easily put this, fit this into here. Do you like it? Take note, the top of my dark point here is on the wall, just like the rest of them. The dark point is on the wall. But look what happens here. I lose it. I lose it. I lose it. That's going to get cut off. Look, let me show you what I'm talking about. Look. The point is going to get cut off. Anybody with an eye is going to notice it. Do you understand what I mean? Let me show you. I keep my point here. I lose it there on the next sheet. I lost it. And it's all nice and snug. What am I going to do? If I pull this down, I'm going to lose match up here. I'll have a buckle here. What do I do? Does anybody have any suggestions? Anybody? Shh. Don't say anything. Shh. 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 Shh.
Сейчас. Сейчас. A wallpaper hanger. Is somebody who makes carpenters crooked work look good? I got my corner back. I got my corner back. Shut up. Don't you tell anybody. Don't you dare. Don't you dare tell anybody. That's why we don't trim this. Because I had to move it down. Oh, see that? I had to pull it down to make these meet. And if you trimmed it, you're gonna show a gap here. Okay, let's go forward. What do you think? Okay. I have a friend named Billy Devlin. He's a decorator from Ennis, Ireland. And um, when I did this uh, three years ago, just look up Spencer Colgan. Um, laund laundry room oranges wallpaper. You'll see where I did this on... No, actually it was on in that house, but not that video. Anyway, when he saw the video, he said, Spencer, that's called cheating the wall. Okay. Okay, now look at the top reveal. Follow my finger. Dark diamond, dark diamond, dark diamond, dark diamond, dark diamond. Same thing all across. Has anybody, has anybody figured it out? What? If this, if we did this, then what else is going to happen? Got to do the same thing here. Okay, you see? Now watch. I made myself a seam. Now we're only talking about... A very small amount of overlap, but it's the only thing that worked. Okay? Okay, I'm gonna trim that. I'm gonna double, I'm gonna double, uh, double cut that so that you don't see the seam. Okay? Y you realize this is a seam now, right? Okay. Now it all fits, it all fits. It's a long story. It's a long story. Why did it happen? Who's blaming me? Hey, listen. We just hang the stuff. Okay? We just hang it. And we come up with the solutions to the problems. Now, I really wish I could have shown you in detail how that happened. It happens when you wrap around a window and you have this very challenging situation whereby you have a quarter of an inch. There's no room for error. It's very hard to get it to match up. Maybe my friend from England can shed some light as to why it happens. And um, hopefully Phil has something to say about it. Now, we're not out of the woods yet. We're not out of the woods. I still have my scene. Okay? 
so we're going to trim it. And now, just in case you didn't realize, the reason why we chose this, it's the easiest place to hide the cut. Okay. Come down this line. Whoops, got to pass through this. But for the most part, we're going with this groovy pattern piece here, okay? Okay. So now, with the help of the straight edge, I'm going to cut diagonally. Now, folks, I didn't emphasize enough during this video windows throw this out it knocks it off square is this window level sure it is sure it is i i, I only have a laser level here but we could check it out to make sure that it's level in fact i will window is plumb okay can't blame it on that But when you come around, it doesn't always meet up. And we were off significantly. Let's take you up front to the action. So we did a double cut. Cut our overwrap piece. 
and here it is hanging. Okay, it was here. And now we cut it. Now we have to get the underlap. room to play with. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, let's mend our pieces. What do you think? What do you think? Let me clean it up and show it to you better. Just washing the sponges from the last frame. Now, don't be offended. This is not for amateurs. Because there's a lot to go over that I don't have the time to go over which is, if you're going to make a cut on a patterned wallpaper, you have to cut around the lines of the pattern so to hide your splice. Secondly, you have to use the thinnest blade available, which is a single edge. And it's not, it's, it's a little dangerous, you know? So this is not the, the first time you want to be doing this. You know, you want to have some seam cuts under your belt before you attempt this. Let's get back to the wall. Okay, we're still just washed up. Okay. Now, granted, I'm 10 feet away from the wall. When we get up close, we're going to see our cut a little better. You know, meaning it's going to be visible and we don't want it to be. I'm hoping my new YouTube friend, Phil Beckworth, can shed some light onto this phenomenon as to why it happens. It doesn't always happen, you know, around windows. Here's our seam. Remember, remember the seam. Okay, it's hiding nicely. Get yourself some watercolor pencils too so you can hide your seams better. Okay, let me wash that and trim that. Now remember, the next sheet is gonna be off, right? See, it's off. But, what if... No, we gotta do it. So we're looking to cut it here. But everything else matches up, okay? So let's get our cut going. Okay. Because we can see. We're not matching up here. You see? It's clearly a mismatch. No. We're 12 feet in the air. Only a careful eye would see it. But we're pros, so you can't leave that like that. 
You can do it if you're a weekend warrior working on your own house, but not here. Let me pull that apart. Okay. just leave this for the pros the following comment did anybody catch my screw up over here I'm not gonna tell you I'm not gonna tell you what I did this was the piece that I took down I forgot that I kind of splice it. So I trimmed it. I trimmed it too short. Do professionals make mistakes? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, come on now. Alrighty. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. See, before I did this thing to it, I trimmed it. So I should have, remember we talked about leaving, don't cut it yet. Well, Spencer forgot. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. So remember, our point has to be in the picture. Remember? Remember our point, right? I was very happy to share with you some good news. I was recently voted the number one wallpaper installer in the entire state of Florida by my wife and children. And I was so happy to win that award because not very few people get that. Let me trim that. Alrighty. Okay. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm dropping stuff here. Okay, let me think. Now the only thing left to do is to do my double cut, right? That's why we're here. We gotta do this double cut. Okay, so let's do it. And then we're done. What do you think? What do you think of the entire slice? You ever have a problem with the vinyl seam? Take some VOV glue. Vinyl over vinyl. Put it on underneath and go to work. Not easy. Look at the symmetry here. These dots right under here, these dots right under here. Not an easy installation. 
So what do you think? Wasn't easy. It was actually one of the most difficult installs in my career. This quarter inch overlap business is not right. And I'm going to let Philip Jeffries know. A quarter of an inch? <laughs> I thought the girl was mistaken when she told me that. I really did. So, there you have it. Now there's blue paint on the trim, so that's not my wallpaper, okay? Neither is this. It's blue paint, because the wall was blue underneath the wall covering. Nice tight cuts around the trim. All right, so let me redo the video showing everything. I, forget, I forgot to bust my seams above the window on the last video. So I'm very happy with the installation. Very pleased with the way it came out, okay? And if you're hanging this product, be very careful because the overlap, to me, in my opinion, is ridiculous. A quarter of an inch, and you have to be so precise. And on a, on a wall that's very tall, you know, the wall covering isn't always perfectly straight. Plum. I mean, you know, sometimes it's, it's an eighth of an inch off. That's not a lot. You can't see it. But they're only giving you two one-eighths of an inch, which is a quarter. Okay, so there you have it.